Hello and welcome to C++ Weekly. I'm your host, Jason Turner. I am available for contracting, on-site training, and code reviews. In this episode, I am going to discuss the humble assignment operator in C++ and specifically starting with what it means in C++11. So if you've ever had any reason to create your own assignment operator, you probably know that there are two canonical forms of it, and they look like this. This is known as your copy assignment operator and move assignment operator. And these two forms cover all of the different ways that you might be assigned to. Uh, the object that is being assigned to can be a non-const reference or a non-const R value reference, and the object being assigned from could be a non-const reference, a const reference, an R value reference. And if you passed in a const R value reference object, then it is going to go back to this const L value reference version. And this is where we get back into that why you cannot move from const episode that I did a couple of months ago because of the conversions that the compiler lets you do, which is why this works. And so now these are the two canonical forms and we have them explicitly defaulted here. But these are certainly not the only two forms that can exist. So we've got these two, and technically we can swap the const and non-constness of these two things. Now, the problem is moving from a const R value reference has no meaning. So this one can't be defaulted, but it is a valid form, and we can explicitly delete it, and the compiler has no problem with that. So that is cool, but this is also not all of the forms that exist, because if we were so inclined, we could have reference qualified versions of these. So we can make our R value and L value reference qualified versions. Now, if you're going to do your reference qualifiers, you have to do it on all of the overloads. You can't leave any out. So we have to go in and do all of these. And now we see that the compiler can generate for us the L value reference qualified and R value reference qualified versions of each of these, except for the ones that are assignment from a const R value reference. This is still not technically all of the versions that could exist, but we start to get into a really weird place. We have all of these versions, which is eight so far, and we can actually make another eight of them by making const R value and L value reference qualified versions. Assigning to a const object does not have any logical meaning, so there is no way for the compiler to generate these versions for us. However, that doesn't mean that we couldn't technically provide our own version if we wanted to. So these versions, it cannot default, so we need to delete them if we're going to mention them here. And really, you can delete any overload. This doesn't mean that there's anything special about it because it is a uh, assignment operator or anything like that. But if you want to talk about assignment operations, this is now the full set of assigning from your own type things that could exist. So for the sake of organization, we're going to have all the things that are possible on top, that is six different operations, and all the things that are impossible on the bottom, which is the remaining 10 operations. So you might be wondering, why in the world did I just go through all of this? And there are a couple of interesting things that we can do. There are some people who would say, now let's go ahead and start testing this code. If you want to create an object of type S, which is what we've done here, and assign it equal to another object of type S, this is going to work. We have assigned a value to a temporary, and that's not something that you could do with a built-in temporary like an int. So some people would suggest that we should delete our 
our value reference qualified versions here so that this illogical operation goes away. Before we move on, I should point out that this code no longer compiles, and that is correct. That's what we wanted to do. We wanted to disable this from compilation. Now, another interesting thing is that because we have explicitly deleted our const r value reference, if we were to have something like our object s here named lowercase s, and we have our object called s2, and we want to do an assignment of s equal to the value of s2. This should work, that's fine. And if we want to do a move assignment, that continues to work after we include the proper headers. And so this works, this is what we would expect. Now, if we were to make this const, now we actually get a build error. And let me show the output here. We get this use of deleted function for the R value or for the L value const assignment thing. Comment out this code so that we're back to something that compiles again. And so if you really wanted to, you could make a type that could be some sort of temporary that is assignable only from a const r value reference thing. So this currently can't compile, and we can actually see right here with our squiggly which version it is attempting to call, and that we have explicitly deleted it. Now we can't default it because well, we have no way of defaulting it. The compiler doesn't know anything special meaning about this, but we could provide our own version. And this will now technically compile, although we're doing something really bad because we're not returning value from a function that returns a value. But it is possible for us to provide this crazy overload. So uh, just there you have it. This is all of the possible things that can happen with an assignment from your own type and the things that are logical and illogical and the things that the compiler can generate for us or cannot generate for us. And perhaps maybe you've uh, learned a couple of things that you might implement if you want to constrain the way that your types are used. Be sure to subscribe, follow me on Twitter, and check out any of the links below.